Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm glad that you are joining me again. Currently we're in this season, um, we're in this series entitled Chosen. We're studying the book of Acts, chapter six through nine. This week we are focused on chapter seven. We're coming out of a chapter that talks or that ended on a note regarding Stephen um, and how he was one of the disciples' choices to continue the mission of Christ, to carry forth the gospel and meeting physical needs and spiritual needs in the area that the disciples assigned to him. And so now we're at the point um, in these particular chapters where Stephen is brought before a council because of um, just people hearing about what he was preaching and kind of rejecting it in some sense. And so I'm going to read through the first 16 verses just to kind of give some context to um, what we'll be talking about. And I'm going to be getting up just to grab my notebook because I want to um, also give you guys the next set of verses that I'll be studying as well. But for now, let's read through verses 1 through 16. And it says, And the high priest said, Are these things so? And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia Potamia, before he lived in Haran and said to him, go out from your land and from your kindred and go into the land that I will show you. Then he went out from the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his fathers died, God removed him from there into this, this land in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length. But he promised to give it to him as a possession and to his offspring after him, though he had no child. And God spoke to this effect that his offspring would be sojourners in a land belonging to others who would enslave them and afflict them for 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they will serve, said God. And after that, they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave them the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the 12 patriarchs. And the patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him out of all of his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who made him ruler over Egypt and over all of his household. Now there came a famine throughout all Egypt and Canaan and great affliction, and our fathers could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers on their very first visit. And on the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. And Joseph sent and summoned Jacob, his father, and all his kindred, 75 persons in all. And Jacob went down into Egypt, and he died, he and our fathers. And they were carried back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham had brought, that had, Abraham had bought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamer in Shechem. All right, guys. So, like I said, we're studying just the narrative of Stephen. When Stephen was presented before the council, and he was asked, "What?" Like, is this true? These accusations that are being thrown out about you, is it true that you're you're speaking these things that, that people are talking about? And if you haven't um, kind of read what I'm talking about, I did a video, I did a live video on it. Go back and check out that video. But if not, just read the end of Acts chapter six and you'll kind of get some context to what we're talking about. Um, but here's the interesting thing what I noticed and um, that I'm interested about is that Stephen doesn't just say you guys are hypocrites, you're living this awful life not according to the plan and the will of God and you need to return back to that or else you're going to be condemned for the rest of your life. He doesn't just go straight to the point. The point he makes begins with the very foundation of the gospel like the beginning of the covenant that God was making with mankind after sin had entered into the world and I think this is the case I think Stephen does this to give some background or give some context to what he's what he's talking about because it's important not just to know that hey you guys are off track with your religion with what you're believing with what you're you're accusing me of you're off track with how you're trying and attempting to serve God he doesn't just 
get straight to the point, but it gives them some background and says, okay, well, we'll start from the beginning, from when Abraham existed and God made a covenant with Abraham and how it wasn't realized in the time when God actually told Abraham, Abraham about how it be realized, but it became realized later on when he had a son. And through Isaac's son, Jacob, he bore a son, um, sorry, through Isaac's, um, Abraham's son, Isaac, and Isaac's son, Jacob, he bore 12 patriarchs who would um, rely on their one brother, Joseph, who they threw into slavery to deliver them out of slavery and to give them their resources and give them what they need and, and you know, begin that kind of transition into helping the listeners or this council understand, okay, here is the, the in-depthness of, of what I'm doing. I'm not just simply disobeying, disobeying your law, my intentions are not of that. This is what the gospel, this is what the gospel is based upon. This is the grounds by which the gospel was built. This is how we get to Jesus. This is how God introduces this whole idea of grace and this whole idea of the gospel and this whole idea of, of following Jesus to us. Like, this is how you've misinterpreted all this time what it truly means to serve God and to live for God and to live um, according to, to love and justice and truth. Like all of that is now found in Jesus Christ. But instead of him getting straight to the point, he's gonna give some background. So I think it's important for us not to miss the background. So many times we just skip over, oh, he's just reviewing the Old Testament. He's just reviewing what happened. We already know about Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. We already know their stories. But let's not assume that we know how it connects to the gospel, right? So we've heard it several times, we've heard it many times, but I think it's important for us to always bring ourselves back into perspective and continue to study these lineages, continue to study these stories, these great men of God who were all chosen and selected of their generations to represent God in the earth before Jesus even touched the earth. While Jesus existed from the beginning of time with God and, and the Holy Spirit, before Jesus was born into, into the earth as a man, all of this thing, all of this had to happen. He was born through this lineage of time. And so it's important to understand the groundwork by which the gospel was built. Like the first things that happened in the earth, which led God to send Jesus here to accomplish the work that he did and to give us a new law and a new covenant to live by. Like if we didn't understand the old covenant, then it'd be hard to put into perspective and really attain and grab a hold to the new covenant by which we're living now. So this week guys, I pray that you just continue to find encouragement in those stories, the old and the new, and connect them. Like ask Jesus for re revelation and give you knowledge about how these things connect, how these stories connect, how these men of old and these men in the New Testament relate. Like how they're accomplishing the same work and working toward the same things of making Jesus known and knowing Jesus and knowing the full purpose of God, and my husband is now snoring, so I've got to end this video. But anyway, I pray that you, as you continue to read, that you will trust Jesus to give you revelation about what you're reading. And as you read by faith, I pray that you will continue to grow in grace. You guys, I'm studying Acts chapter seven, <laughs> and um, I'll be studying out loud all week long on my Facebook pages, um, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course you're watching YouTube. Then I'll come back and I'll do another live session on Friday, um, just to kind of wrap it up and to get into verses 17 through 36, which will be part two of Acts chapter seven. You guys, this chapter is going to take a couple of weeks, just simply because there are 60 verses and I do not wanna just skip over all the goodness that can be found in all 60 verses. So bear with me, study verses one through 16 in the beginning of this week and then we'll come back and review verses 17 through 36. Thank you for watching. I pray that you will continue to read, 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 and trust the Holy Spirit to give you revelation. Until next time, bye.